Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Eden Hernandez, Grasshopper Specialist at Sheet Diver. In today's video, following up the second part of our optimization tutorials, we will explain some more tips and tricks to optimize your Grasshopper definition in order to reduce their computation time. If you missed our last videos, you will find the links down in the description. This time we will explain how to efficiently send data from Grasshopper to your online applications. This includes geometry, materials, transformations, raw data, and custom scripts. This is crucial if you are creating product configurators, like a lot of our clients do, and you don't want your users to be waiting for a long time in order to get a result in our viewer. But before we get started, please remember to subscribe and to like this video as it really helps our channel. And if you haven't done so, follow us in all of our social media channels. Finally, if you want to find out what you can do with ShapeDiver, make sure to check our website. Remember that all mentioned links and the files used in this tutorial will be available down in the description. Alright, let's get started! The first thing that we will explain is how to send geometry to ShapeDiver and of course how to do it in the most efficient way. To explain that we have this definition in Grasshopper. This definition simply creates some spheres with some materials. So if we check our parameters, we have a minimum sphere diameter, a maximum sphere diameter, a number of spheres in the X direction, and a number of spheres in the Y direction. So to decide the size of each sphere, we use this random component, which will use the domain between 10 and 30, and Knowing that we have seven spheres in X and six spheres in Y, we can multiply those numbers and know that we have 42 spheres in total. So that's the amount of random numbers that we want to get. And to position our spheres, we use this square cell component, which give us 42 points in the space. And with those 42 radius and 42 points, we can create our spheres mesh. On the other hand, we have the group that creates the materials. So for that we have three color options and three material options. And also using a random component and knowing that we have 42 spheres in our scene, then we can compute some random indexes that will select the color for each of our spheres. And then we use these selected colors and these selected materials to create our shape diver simple material, which gets connected in our shape diver display geometry component. This component is the one that will take each of our spheres and apply the materials. So the first thing that you may notice here is that we have grafted the output of our mesh sphere component so that we have one sphere per branch. And on the other hand, we have kept all of our materials in a single list. This is made intentional because each of our branches in our geometry will get matched with one material in our list. So that means our material in the index number zero will get matched with our first branch. Our material in the index number one will get matched with the next branch and so on and so on. That means that in each of our branches we could have multiple meshes and all of them will get the same material. The reason why ShapeDiver uses this logic of tree versus list is because each of our branches, it's a file that gets sent to our online configurator. So that means that in this case, we are sending 42 files to our online configurator. Each of these files contain a geometry description. In this case, the meshes contain vertices, vertices normals, vertices colors, etc and also a material description. So all of the meshes that get contained in the same branch get merged into a single mesh, which is our file with our material description. The first thing that we have to make sure is that each of these files is as small as possible. And to do so, we need to make our meshes contain the least vertices possible. So that's why we have this parameter called the mesh quality, and when we reduce this parameter, this will reduce the amount of vertices in our spheres and therefore reduce the file size. 
However, we don't want to reduce it too much because then we lose the actual shape of our sphere. But we don't want to make it too high because then we are making our file size too big and sending information that is not crucial. So in this case, we can go, for example, to 10 in quality. And in this way, we can reduce our file size, but still keep the spherical shape of our meshes. Now that we made sure to reduce as much as possible the file size, now we need to reduce the amount of files that get sent to ShapeDiver. So in this case, we are sending 42 files to ShapeDiver, but we could reduce this amount by grouping all of the meshes that contain the same material into the same branch. So if we use the create set component, this component gives us as output in the set the unique items, so in this case, yellow, blue, red. And in the map component, it gives us the indexes to which each of these items belong. So in this case, we know that the first and the second items are yellow. We know that the second item is blue. Then the next item is red. Then the next item is blue again, etc., etc. So these indexes are the same ones that we have in our unique items list. However, in this case, we have not just colors, but also indexes that represent the material that we will use. These indexes, so these 400, 300, 200, etc., are indexes of materials that ShapeDiver offer. So for example, 100 mean basic, 200 mean plastic, 200 metal, 400 glass. We have more materials and you can find the link down below in the description where you can find all of these indexes of different materials that ShapeDiver offers. So for example, there is also woods, fabrics, leather, etc. In this case, we are using just the basic materials. And to be able to compare with our set component which materials are unique, we can use in this case the concatenate component. With this component, we can join our colors, names, then use a string character to divide our colors from our indexes. And in this way, we have in a single string, in a single text, the description of our material. So for example, we know that the first sphere is yellow with material index 400. The next one is yellow as well, but material index 300 and etc. etc. Now we input these strings, this text, in our create set component and with that we now get eight unique materials so even though we have 42 spheres we just have in between those 42 spheres eight unique materials now we need to position all of these spheres each of them in the corresponding group material to do so we can use this component in the sets tab call the replace paths component. Let's clean up a bit here. We will take our meshes tree into the data input. Then we will search all the paths inside our tree. So in this case, we can use the param viewer component. This component gives us as output the list of branch paths that goes inside the search input. And finally, we use the map output to replace our original paths. And what this component will do is to take each of our branches in our tree and replace its branch path from the original one to the new one, which is the one that match our unique materials. So now as output, we have eight branches instead of the original 42 branches that we had. And each of these branches get matched with each of the material descriptions that we have in our set output. Now to create our unique materials, we need to again separate our descriptions into the colors and then the material index. So to do so, we can use the split text component and we will split our text based on the original text that we use to join it. And in this way, we can get in the first item, the color, and in the second item, the material index. Then we use again the shape diver simple material component and we input the first item into colors 
the second item into material index. And then that will give us as output nine materials, which are unique between each other. And then we put into the geometry input the nine branches which are matched with our unique materials. In this way, we have reduced the amount of files that we send to ShapeDiver from 42 files to just eight files. And as I said before, all of the meshes that are in each of these branches will be automatically merged into one single mesh that gets sent as a unique file. So if we were to join these meshes here in Grasshopper, we can see how big our files will be in terms of mesh size. Now, what if we could reduce the final mesh size of our join meshes, but without affecting the mesh quality that we already reduced? So to do so, we have to first notice that all of our mesh spheres are actually the same geometry. So the only thing that changes is its size and its position. So the solution would be that instead of sending all of these 42 meshes, we could send a single one, but with metadata which contain the transformations of our mesh. So the positioning and the scaling. So instead of creating all of the meshes from scratch, we can create a single one, position in the origin, so the base would be the world XZ plane, and with a radius of one, because we will scale our mesh based on the radius. And here, what we can do is use the move component to get all of the transformations out of this component and the scale component in our radius to get all of the transformations from this component. So now we can delete our original mesh sphere component. Then we will graft our transformation output in the scale and graft our transformation output in the transform. We will merge this into the same tree and this will give us couples of transformations. So the first one is scaling. So we will first scale our sphere and then we will move it to the corresponding position. Then to join this into a single transformation, we go into the transform tab and in the util section, we will find the compound component. This component will join our couple of transformations into a single one, one transformation description per sphere. And we will use again our replace paths component, but to sort our transformations instead of our meshes. So we input our transformations into data and into param viewer. Then as output, we will get the different transformations in the different branches based on the unique materials that we have. And now what we need to do is to somehow attach these transformations into our unique sphere. So to do so, we have a special C-sharp developed here internally at ShapeDiver. This C-sharp will be also available down in the description in a grasshopper file. So in one input, you will put the geometry, in this case, our sphere mesh, and in the second, the transformations. So as you will see, even though we have 42 transformations in the input, we get just nine items in the output. These nine items are the spheres with the attached transformations in the respective branch based on our unique materials. So if we input that output into the geometry, we will get the same result of our spheres with the corresponding radius and position. But now we are sending a single sphere per branch, which reduces significantly the file size that gets sent to ShapeDiver. Now, having to account that these transformations are also data that is being transferred to the online application. So if you send thousands of transformations, that may also affect the online application speed because, of course, this also increases the file size that we send to ShapeDiver. Therefore, it's a balance between the mesh size and the amount of transformations that we attach in those meshes. Finally, something that we need to have into account is the limitations that ShapeDiver has in respect to the geometry. So if we go to support.shapediver.com, in the limitations regarding definitions outputs section, you can find the definition of file part, which is the branches that we are sending to ShapeDiver and the limitations that are in place. So for example, in terms of file parts, so the amount of branches that you can have per output component is up to 64 
files. So that means that in each of these display components, you can have up to 64 branches. That's why merging all of our meshes with the same material into a few branches is ideal. But if in your definition, it is not possible to combine several meshes into a few branches, then you can also use several of these shape diver geometry display components because the limitation is per display component. So you can send to each of these displays 64 files and then you could send another 64 to a second shape diver display geometry component. Now you can do that until you hit the total file parts allowed per definition. So in total, in all your definition, there shouldn't be more than 256 files. Internally at ShapeDiver, we have created very complex definitions and we have never hit the 256 files limit. And that's because we are very careful in the optimization of our models. So if you hit this limit, probably you will need to review your definition to see where you need to optimize. Now, in terms of transformations, there is also a limit of 1,024 transformations. All of these limits are put in place because of efficiency reasons. So we encourage our users to keep everything way below these limits to optimize the transfer of data. And that's it for today's tutorial. So we have reduced our mesh size to reduce the file size that gets sent to our online application. We have reduced the amount of branches to reduce the amount of files that get sent to our online application. And we have attached transformations in our meshes so that we can send single small meshes instead of big complex meshes. I hope these tips and tricks helps you in the creation of optimized online applications based on Grasshopper. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. In the next optimization tutorial, we will look at how to display external geometry in our online applications to avoid them being sent to our Grasshopper definitions. So if you don't want to miss out this next tutorial, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next tutorial.